Okay, let me share the screen. Is the presentation visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Thank you. So we'll start with the Shanti Mantra and then begin the class. Om Purna Madaha Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudachate Purnasya Purna Madaya Purna Meva Avashishate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you. Welcome to the course ECN 534 Antenna Theory and Design. So from today onwards, uh, we will look into one of the important topics in antenna theory and design, which is antenna arrays. So, so far we have covered two important topics. One was antenna introduction, which had uh, definitions of some of the key words used in the antennas. And then we also covered wire antennas, including dipole antenna and loop antenna. We have seen how to analyze the antenna using current distribution. Uh, once we know the current distribution and the space factor, we can analyze the we obtain the auxiliary vector potential. Once we have the auxiliary vector potential, we then find out the fields. And once we have the fields, we find out the power density, radiation intensity, directivity, and uh, effective aperture area. And radiation resistance also. That's also one of the important key parameters. OK, so from today onwards, we will look into another important topic, which is uh, antenna array, how to analyze the antenna arrays. So we will start looking into this topic. So in today's lecture, I will cover about uniform two element array. So my uh, my uh, plan is to cover the theory and then show the CST simulation in the same class. That is, today I will be covering uniform two element array theory part of it. And if time permits, we will cover the CST simulation also, just to give you a, a view, a overview of how simple it is to use the tools compared to the analytical techniques. So I just want to give you that overview. OK, so let us begin with two element array, uniform two element array. So here, this is the geometry for the element array. So in, initially, we had only, so we are considering two infinitesimal dipole antennas. OK, so we know how to analyze the single infinitesimal dipole antenna. We know that, right? How, what will be the radiation pattern? what will be the radiation intensity. So we know how to analyze the infinitesimal dipole antenna. We are well familiar with that now. Now we take two element, two such antennas, two infinitesimal dipole antennas, one play, with separate, placed along the z-axis. Uh, there's a lot of information in this uh, slide, so let us go slowly. So we have two antennas placed along the z-axis. So the ax antenna array axis is along the z-axis. But the infinitesimal dipole themselves are not oriented in the z axis. They are oriented in the y axis. So if you see the current distribution of the infinitesimal dipole antenna, so the, it is oriented along the y axis, right? But the antennas themselves are placed along the z axis. So this is a linear array. So there are two, only two elements, so it's a linear array. And uh, the distance between the two antennas is, uh, is d, d. Total distance is d. OK, small d. And here is our observation point. So the observation point can be anywhere on the sphere. So for a time moment, we will take the observation point in the zy plane. So if we have the observation point here, according to the geometry, we have uh, the let us go into the uh, distance and the angle. So theta 1 is the angle from, uh, from the z-axis and the observation point and one of the elements of the antenna array. Theta 2 is the other angle. So theta 1, theta, and theta 2 are all different. If you go very strictly, if you go rigorously into this diagram, you find out that theta 1, theta, and theta 2 are all different. Theta is the angle from the origin. So from the origin, the distance is r to the observation point. And the other two distances are r1 and r2 from the actual distances from the antenna. OK. So this is the very important uh, to note that theta 1, theta, and theta 2 are different. R1 and R and R2 are different. And strictly speaking, uh, they're all different. And this is our geometry, what we have. 
and we approve we take the same approach what we did in the finite element dipole antenna analysis of finite element dipole antenna remember we had finite length dipole antenna and the space factor was having a similar distinction so what we did was we took the parallel approach we took the uh, approach where all the distances are made parallel to each other so we simplify the geometry this geometry into this geometry here what we what are the simplifications we made theta 1 theta 2 and theta are all same here right theta all of them are theta r1 and r and r2 are parallel here they are not parallel here we made them parallel so by making them parallel we can now easily express r1 in terms of r r2 in terms of r we can easily express because if you if you take a right angle here if you take the projection of r1 and r1 on r and that makes a right angle here so the extra length is d by 2 cos theta this is the extra length right so r1 is nothing but r minus d by 2 cos theta similarly r2 is nothing but you have r plus extra length which is d by 2 cos theta it makes a 90 degree right angle theta 1 theta 2 theta are all same now so we have simplified the geometry what we had for the analysis of two element array into this so we already made a one important simplification so this uh, it's not exact so whatever we are going to perform the analysis is not exact analysis there is already two simplifications we have made one is we made theta 1 theta and theta 2 are same as theta and r1 and r and r2 are parallel to each other so we made two important simplifications or two important assumptions so what is the total electric field so we are interested in the total electric field we are not so let so let us see how the analysis carries forward so we are interested in the total electric field now the total electric field is the sum of the electric field from the one of the element antenna array and the other element antenna array so e1 and e2 is the sum of the so e total is, is the sum of the e1 and e2 can anybody tell me from which theorem or principle we can write this expression anybody wants to attempt so if you have two antennas we are writing that the total electric field at the observation point is the sum of the contribution from each one of the antenna so this comes from which principle or which theorem superposition yes it is it comes from the superposition theorem a law of superposition right law of additivity to be very specific so now we have individual fields and then we combine the uh, individual field so let us take individual part okay before that i would like to ask suppose if this antenna was oriented along the z axis okay so please hear this question carefully suppose the antenna was oriented along the z axis as we have already covered as we have already seen in the previous lectures it was oriented along the z axis so in the zy plane what will be the function of the electric field in the zy plane in terms of theta if it is oriented in the z axis in the zy plane as a function of theta what will be the electric field function how the electric field varies as a function of theta can anybody attempt sin theta it is sin theta yes can can you explain little bit why it is sin theta Sensitive so because right. the radiation pattern, um, maybe. Yes, from the radiation pattern, right? So we know the radiation pattern will be maximum along the y-axis, that is theta equal to 90 degrees, and the radiation will be zero along x-axis, uh, theta equal to zero and theta equal to minus 180. Correct? Yes, sir. So that gives us sine theta. So sine zero is zero. Sine 90 is maximum and sine 180 is zero. So we get sine theta pattern if the antenna was oriented along the z-axis, right? So we would have something, a figure of eight, horizontal figure of eight with a symbol like a symbol of infinity. So we would have sine theta function for the electric field. Now the electric field is oriented in the y-axis. So what would be the function of the electric field in terms of theta? 
now it is oriented along the y axis only in the x in the only in the zy plane then sin 90 minus theta cos theta sin 90 minus theta yes sin 90 minus theta so now the figure of 8 will be in the vertical direction correct yes sir so since we have the figure of 8 in the vertical direction so we have theta equal to 0 maximum radiation theta equal to 90 degree minimum radiation and theta equal to 180 degree maximum radiation so we would have cos theta so that cos 0 is maximum cos 90 is minimum and cos 180 is maximum so we would have a figure of 8 in the vertical direction along the z axis right yes okay so good attempt so we have so let us find out the electric field intensity electric field intensity from individual antenna so from the individual antenna we know this expression for the uh, scaling factor right this this comes from your uh, analysis of uh, infinitesimal dipole antenna which is the it's proportional to the length of the antenna itself for infinitesimal small dipole antennas and there is a sp uh, space factor so the space factor is nothing but e power of uh, oh there is one thing which i forgot to mention so these two antennas may have a phase difference in their excitation see there are uh, so we we have see there is a space factor and there is a electric uh, electric excitation factor so the space factor is d the distance between them is d so that we are aware of it now they are also fed with they they can be fed with different phases but the amplitude is same so we are interested in so they are identical antennas to start with very important assumption and then we made two other assumptions that theta 1 is equal to theta 2 is equal to theta and r1 is equal to r is equal to r r1 r2 and r are parallel to each other so that made the second assumption the third assumption is that they are fed with uniform uh, currents so the current in the antenna is uniform uniform when the say when i say amplitude is uniform so we don't vary the amplitude but the phases there can be a phase difference between the two elements so with respect to the origin so one can be beta if beta is the phase difference between them one will be beta by 2 and another will be minus beta by 2 so there can be phase difference between the two elements very important to note but their amplitudes is uniform okay so there is so if it is 1 1 1 ampere 0 degrees this can be 1 ampere 90 degrees or 60 degrees or 30 degrees it can be any phase but their amplitudes are same it is 1 ampere this is also this also will have excitation of 1 ampere so there is a space factor and the space factor includes the e power of minus j beta r we have seen this one right e power of minus j beta r1 r1 in the phase and in the amplitude and there is an excitation phase difference also coming into picture beta is the excitation phase difference between the two elements so there can be an excitation phase difference for example 1 ampere 0 degrees 1 ampere 90 degrees so the phase difference is 90 degrees 1 ampere 0 degree 1 ampere minus 90 degree so the phase difference is minus 90 degree so in that case there can be a phase difference also and cos theta 1 so we have we have just seen how the cos theta 1 comes into the picture so this will be the electric field electric field intensity uh, for the first element for the first antenna for the r1 similarly we will have the electric field intensity from the second antenna element which is at a distance of r2 so that will have e power of minus j k r2 by r2 plus beta 2 so there is a phase difference right between the two elements with respect to the origin it is referred to as minus beta by 2 and plus beta by 2 okay so we have a phase difference so taken into account and cos theta 2 but we have already made theta 1 is equal to theta 2 so we have made that assumption right so theta 1 is equal to theta 2 and r1 is equal to r2 suppose we are in the very far very far field we are we are in a very far off region in the far field then theta r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r we can make a reasonable assumptions for the amplitude for the amplitude variations we can make r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r so this is much more simpler of the uh, approximations so for amplitude approximations it is much more uh, intuitive but for the phase we cannot make because of the phase wrapping so for the phase we cannot ignore this distance so that distance also has to be taken into account so r1 is equal to r minus d cos theta in the phase term r2 is equal to r plus d cos d cos theta in the phase term 
ओके वेर एज फॉर द एम्पलीट्यूड्स वी कैन मेक आर वन इज इक्वल टू आर टू इज इक्वल टू आर एंड कॉस्ट थीटा थीटा वन इज इक्वल टू थीटा टू वी हैव ऑलरेडी मेड दैट अदर अप्रॉक्सीमेशन ओके सो वी इवेल्युएट दिस सो व्हाट वी व्हाट हैपेंस इज ई पावर ऑफ माइनस जे बीटा आर यू कैन टेक इट आउटसाइड ई पावर ऑफ माइनस जे बीटा आर यू कैन टेक इट आउटसाइड आर वन एंड इज इक्वल टू आर टू सो यू कैन टेक आर वन आर टू आउटसाइड एंड कॉस्ट थीटा वन इज कॉमन टू बोथ ऑफ देम यू कैन टेक देम आउटसाइड so you have taken all those factors outside and you are left with e power of uh, j kd cos theta uh, plus beta by 2 and e power of minus j kd cos theta uh, plus beta by 2 so what we have done is we have replaced r1 in with these expressions and we have taken the common factors outside the uh, outside the bracket so we are left with very important uh, uh, we are left with important equation that if you observe this equation so it consists of two factors so the first factor is exactly identical as if there was a dipole antenna placed at the origin okay so the two element array would would indicate as if the electric field intensity of the two element array is as if the there would be a, a single antenna placed at the origin so this is the this is the contribution of the uh, uh, of the antenna single antenna placed at the origin of the axis multiplied with an array factor so the array factor is determined by kd cos theta plus beta what do you mean by that so the array factor consists of the distance between the two elements it consists of the observation angle angle which what the observation observation point is making an angle at the center of the antenna uh, array axis and the phase excitation phase difference between the two elements so it consists of the distance between the two elements uh, it consists uh, it consists of the angle it depends on the angle the observation point is making with respect to the origin and it also depends on the excitation phase difference between the two elements so it's very important observation so it consists of so the entire total electric field from this so the contribution of the two electric field intensity because of the two elements is as if it consists of Uh, the contribution from the single element placed at the origin in the same direction with no phase difference with zero phase difference multiplied by the array factor now the array factor consists of the uh, geometry with which the it consists of the spatial geometry and the electrical geometry with which the two elements are placed so it consists of the uh, d the distance between the two elements observation point an uh, angle made by the observation point and the electric phase electric phase so there is an array factor so the total electric field is consisting of so we call it as the array pattern multiplication where the of identical elements remember so the antennas have to be identical element the amplitudes have to be not necessarily the same the amplitudes can be different in that case the array factor will be more complicated the array factor will be a little bit complicated the amplitudes need not be the same but they have to be identical elements so for identical elements so for identical elements we can say that the total electric field is equal to the electric field from the single element that's an element factor so this is coming from the single element multiplied by the array factor so the array factor consists of the space factor and the electrical phase excitation that is provided to the individual elements in the antenna array okay so this is very important so if you know what type of antenna you are using in a array you know the element factor right and if you know the distribution of that uh, array you can find out the space factor so from the distribution you can find out the space factor and from the element you can from the element you know the how to analyze a single element so you can easily analyze the entire antenna array so that is so we are so we are breaking down the entire analysis into two parts one is analyzing the single element which we know how to do for the wire antennas at least and then we are analyzing and we are then analyzing only the distribution factor and then we multiply them to get the total electric field which makes our life simple so basically we are making the analysis more simpler and simpler to deal with it because analysis of this geometry itself is extremely complicated this is not very easy to analyze because theta 1 is not same as theta 2 and it depends on theta r1 and r2 are not same as r and they are not even parallel to each other so this analysis is much more complicated 
so we are trying to simplify it to, be, to make our life as simple as possible so at the same time not lose the accuracy so we need accuracy at the same time make the make the analysis simpler so there is always a trade off right so how simpler the analysis and how accurate the analysis is there is always a trade off so this is a reasonable uh, engineering trade off that people have followed in the antenna field so this is antenna uh, pattern multiplication okay so what is array factor so the array factor is given by for the two element array or remember it is two element identical arrays and in this case with this expression it is two element identical array with uh, excitation with uniform amplitude so the amplitude is not varying the phase can vary but the amplitude should not vary okay so that is given by 2 kd half kd cos theta plus beta so if you normalize it so you can you have the normalized array factor also so for the two element array so is this clear before going forward is is this, are the steps clear to all of you you want me to repeat anywhere any of the uh, steps we followed was it clear to all of you okay so i presume that it is clear to all of you so then we take some interesting cases and we will try to see how this pattern looks like just to have a feel of how the pattern happens to be in case of two element array and why do we go for two element array so we will look at uh, one of the important uh, case study so we take three cases so this is the total electric field right so the total electric field is given by some factor so the factor is this one so this entire thing is some factor it depends on current amplitude it depends on the length of the dipole antenna itself infinitesimal dipole antenna itself the distance of the observation point uh, so it depends on the factor some scaling factor multiplied by cos theta so the factor multiplied by cos theta and cos uh, and the array factor so we have the array factor here right so we will take three very simple cases and we will try to see how the pattern of the entire antenna array looks like and how the individual antenna pattern looks like and how the array factor looks like and how uh, the total pattern looks like so we'll take three simple cases so in all the three cases we take distance is equal to lambda by 4 we fix the distance is equal to lambda by 4 we will appreciate this in the next class why did we fix the distance to lambda by 4 so in this case for all the three cases we are fixing the distance is equal to lambda by 4 that is d is equal to lambda by 4 and we have three cases beta equal to 0 that means there is they are in phase in they are fed in phase there is no phase difference between the two elements so there is no phase difference between the two elements in the second case we take the uh, element to be 90 degree leading so the first the element here is 90 degree leading and in the third case we take the element is 90 degree lagging so we take three cases beta equal to 0 beta equal to pi by 2 and beta equal to minus pi by 2 so let us see what happens when we place plug these values into the expression so first let us plug d is equal to lambda by 4 and simplify the expression so what happens uh, to the array factor cos uh, half kd cos theta plus beta so d is equal to lambda by 4 so you plug lambda by 4 and k is equal to 2 pi by lambda so lambda lambda cancels so it's pi by 2 here pi by 2 multiplied with half is pi by 4 and half is taken inside so beta by 2 so we have the array factor pi by 4 cos theta plus beta by 2 when d is equal to lambda by 4 okay so now let us take the first case so the first case is when beta is equal to 0 so we have d is equal to lambda by 4 and beta equal to 0 and we are interested in finding the nulls the nulls in the total normalized electric field so we have normalized it we have removed the scaling factor so in the normalized electric total electric field so this is a total electric field because it consists of the individual element contribution and the contribution from the array factor so what is what are the nulls so we are interested in finding the nulls location of the nulls or the position of the nulls so let us see what is the what are the possible solutions for the nulls to exist so in the normalized factor we have cos theta is equal to 0 possibility 1 and the second possibility the array factor is equal to 0 so that's the second possibility so let us see the first possibility cos theta is equal to 0 so that corresponds to theta is equal to cos inverse of 0 so cos inverse of 0 can be at pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 but uh, theta is limited to 180 degrees pi by 2 
so pi by pi so theta is limited to pi so we cannot take 3 pi by 2 so we are left out with pi by 2 right so this is the uh, one of the possibilities theta is equal to pi by 2 is one of the positions where nulls exist so let us take the array factor now the array factor can be equal to 0 is one of the possibility in this expression right so here we find out that pi by 2 cos of theta n should be equal to cos inverse of 0 So cos inverse of zero can be plus minus pi by two plus minus three pi by two and so on. And let us take the first case pi by two. So pi by four cos theta n is equal to pi by two. Pi by four cos theta n is equal to pi by two. So theta inverse is equal to what happens? Pi pi cancels. Two ones are two twos are so two goes here. Cos theta so theta n is equal to cos inverse of two. And doesn't exist, right? So the first solution doesn't exist. Similarly, if you plug minus pi by two, once again you get cos inverse of minus two, and that also doesn't exist. So the array factor and all other array factors doesn't exist because they are always cos inverse of uh, six, cos inverse of minus six, and cos inverse of nine. So it goes on. So it doesn't exist. So what are the what are the important uh, observations here? So the important observation is so for beta is equal to zero, that is when they are fed in phase. only we have null contributed only from the element contribution and the array factor contribution to the nulls is not there so there is no contribution from the array factor to the nulls so the nulls exist only at theta equal to 90 degree as expected from cos theta so we know that right cos theta cos 90 degree is equal to we are interested in the amplitude so we have taken the amplitude of the total electric field so how does the pattern look like so for beta equal to 0 remember beta equal to 0 we have in phase uh, fed fed with in phase so the dis distance between them is lambda by 4 we have already fixed these uh, parameters so this is so this pattern is the cos theta correct amplitude of the cos theta is this pattern and uh, this one we have fit, uh, contributed from the individual element so this is the element contribution multiplied by array factor so how did we get the array factor so what we did was yeah please try this if you have time please try this plot this cos pi by 4 cos theta as theta varies from 0 to 180 degrees you will get this uh, plot so if you plot cos pi by 4 cos theta and if you plot cos theta you will get this plot amplitude of cos theta similarly if you plot amplitude of cos pi by 4 magnitude of cos pi by 4 cos theta plus pi by 4 so you will have sorry sorry i made a mistake so so if you plot magnitude of cos pi by 4 cos theta you will have this plot okay so please plot this in matlab it will be very interesting so if you multiply them what you find out that there are no nulls in the uh pattern right so the uh, in the array factor there are no nulls so what you find out that if you multiply them you get somewhat similar to the individual element so the multiplication of the individual element contribution individual element and electric field intensity normalized electric field intensity multiplied by the array factor leads to the almost similar to it's not exactly same but it's almost same as that of the individual element so it's very important please pl plot this if possible plot this expressions and plot this expression separately and plot this expression separately and you should get these plots and if you multiply them you should get the total array factor uh, total array field of the total electric field intensity of the total array okay so let us take the case 2 so what is case 2 case 2 consists of d is equal to lambda by 4 distance is lambda by 4 we have already fixed that and the phase difference between the two elements is 90 degrees plus 90 degrees so what happens in this case so in this case we have cos theta this was the expression right cos pi by 4 array factor is cos pi by 4 cos theta plus beta by 2 so beta is pi by 4 sorry pi by 2 beta is pi by 2 so this becomes pi by 4 correct so that becomes pi by 4 now we are once again interested in finding the nulls so there are two possibilities once again so the element factor can be equal to 0 which we have already seen it to be 90 degrees so 90 degree is one of the solution where the element factor uh, contributes to the null so the second solution is the array factor now the array factor is cos of pi by 4 cos theta plus pi by 4 should be equal to 
and that is that turns out to be if you take pi by 4 on to the uh, cos inverse of 0 so pi by 4 cos theta n plus pi by 4 should be equal to cos inverse of 0 so possibilities are plus minus pi by 2 plus minus 3 pi by 2 and plus minus 5 pi by 2 and so on so let us take one by one so if you take plus pi by 2 as the first possibility theta n is equal to theta uh, cos theta so theta is equal to cos inverse of 1 so why what happens pi by 2 minus pi by 4 is pi by 4 pi by 4 pi by 4 cancels so cos inverse of 1 right so theta is cos inverse of 1 so what are the possibilities we have 0 2 pi doesn't exist because theta is limited to pi so theta is equal to 0 is one of the possibilities yes we have one of the possibilities from the array factor one of the nulls location of the nulls from the array factor so let us take the second possibility minus pi by 2 so if you take minus pi by 2 what happens minus pi by 2 minus of pi by 4 is minus 3 pi by 4 minus 3 pi by 4 pi by 4 uh, cancel so we are left with minus 3 cos inverse of minus 3 so cos inverse of minus 3 doesn't exist so minus pi by 4 does minus pi by 2 doesn't exist right so there is no solution for minus pi by 2 similarly the other higher fields doesn't have any solutions because they are all cos inverse of 5 cos inverse of minus 5 minus 7 7 it goes on so there are no solutions so solutions doesn't exist for them so we have two possibilities for the nulls so the nulls can be in theta is equal to 90 degrees or the null can be in the zero degree so the null coming from 90 degree the null at 90 degree is coming from the element contribution whereas the null at zero degree comes from the array factor contribution so once again if you plot the element factor you will have something as a figure of 8 in the vertical direction and if you plot the array factor which is cos of pi by 4 cos theta minus pi by 4 if you plot this so you will have a shape something like this very interesting shape so it will have ah oh, sorry i need so if you plot uh, cos pi by 4 cos theta plus pi by 4 you will have a shape something like this so you will have a null at the zero degrees so there is a null at the zero degree so if you multiply both the factors you get very interesting shape so there are side lobes and the major lobe now now see the omnidirectional pattern has become a directional pattern right very interesting you have side lobes no doubt but the omnidirection in the previous case the omnidirection pattern retained its omnidirectional pattern whereas in this case by just changing the phase just changing the phase we have not changed anything else the spacing is the same so the amplitude of the currents is the same all we have changed is just the phase difference between the two elements and the beauty is the omnidirectional pattern turns out to be a directional pattern it changes its property to the directional pattern very interesting very interesting so please plot this in the matlab and it will be very interesting and we will take the third case so the third case is when uh beta is equal to minus pi by 2 so there is minus 90 degrees so once again if you do the geometry uh, maths i will not going to the i'll quickly go into it so there is the element contribution which is coming by 90 degrees and if you plug the values basically cos of pi by 4 cos theta minus pi by 2 is pi by 4 is equal to 0 so how did we get this expression the we got that expression from this one right pi beta is equal to minus pi by 2 So beta equal to minus pi by two leads to minus pi by four. So if you plug the values and if you solve that expression for the array factor, you have one solution at 180 degrees, and there are no other solutions. So the all other solutions doesn't exist. So there is only one null coming from the array factor at 180 degrees. So how does this pattern look like? So if you plot the element factor, it is the figure of eight, and oh. and if we plot the uh, array factor it is it shows something like this exactly opposite to what we had in the previous case except now it is in the zero direction maximum is in the zero direction and null is in the 180 degrees and if you multiply both of them you get the total electric field intensity once again it's a directional so the omnidirectional pattern has become directional pattern so you can you can you can very easily change Uh, the pattern shape with just by changing the excitation you are not even changing the distance between the elements you are just changing the excitation factor so the excitation uh, between the two elements so by phase of the excitation not even the amplitude of the excitation so with that you can uh, you can have different types of radiation patterns you can enhance the radiation patterns 
you can basically increase your directivity of the array so that's the advantage of going to the arrays okay with that so the theory is covered for the two element array so we were uh, in the next class we'll go for the n element array linear arrays so in this class we covered the uh, theory for the two element array any clarification is required before we take up the cst simulation and try to see how to uh, simulate the arrays in the cst remember this geometry and the analysis becomes very simple we simplified this geometry to this geometry okay so we will quickly we have still some time so we will quickly we have 15 minutes i think i should be able to cover it let me try it out so what i will do is i will use the dipole antenna itself whatever we have already simulated in the previous demo class we will use the dipole antenna itself and then we will try to make two element array and we will try to exactly see these three cases that is theta is equal to 0 degree theta equal to 90 degrees and theta equal to minus 190 degree sorry minus 90 degree and we will try to see whether these patterns how these patterns look like in the uh, 3d plot in the cst how to do the simulation in the cst okay so i will open the uh, previous file which we had uh, dipole antenna demo can anybody point out before going into the simulation can anybody point out no let me ask that in the last if we have time or we will take it into the next class okay so this was the dipole antenna we simulated it right and it was oriented in the z axis correct so we are it's oriented in the z axis and uh, let me see whether this is exactly yeah this was 2.45 gigahertz or 2.5 gigahertz it is very good so we can take this dipole antenna for array simulation so the way we can do array factor simulation is you can model the single element array okay and then you can simulate the single element array and get the far field is the cst visible to all of you yes sir oh okay so you can see the far field yes sir so you can see the far field pattern right so in the far field pattern you can click here the array factor see here i want to replicate this uh, antenna is oriented in the y axis and the array factor is orthogonal to it similarly since we have the antenna oriented in the oh i have opened two eyes since we see here the antenna is oriented in the y axis and the array fact, array axis is in orthogonal to it so since we have the antenna oriented in the z axis i will take the array axis along the y axis okay just orthogonal to the antenna antenna dipole antenna just orthogonal to it so we have the array factor here there is a function in the cst which is array factor click on the array factor here you activate the far field array factor and then you can give elements number of elements since we have analyzed only two elements i will give two elements okay in the y axis so update the list but we have to give the space space factor so the distance between them so the distance between them is how what is the distance between them lambda by 4 correct so that is the case we have taken so the lambda by 4 so let me use this uh, calculator to quickly calculate what is lambda by 4 wavelength calculator wavelength calculator at uh, not this one wavelength calculator at 2.5 gigahertz it's 120 roughly 120 right 119.9 so lambda by 4 we want 119.9 by 4 30 i can take it as 30 right so uh, 30 is the distance between the two elements 
so we have space factor is 30 mm all the units are already in mm so that is lambda by 4 we have given this as lambda by 4 so and now we have the possibility to give the phase also so the phase shift one is the space shift which corresponds to the distance between the two elements so that is a uh, space shift the distance between the two elements and the phase shift is the excitation phase difference between the two elements so to start with i will just give you the uh, uniform uh, that means uh, in phase so 0 0 0 so there is no phase shift update the list so now we have two elements as if placed at 15 degree 15 mm and minus 15 mm and now you can click okay yes so this is the array fact this is the total electric field intensity with two element arrays with zero degree in phase so means it's in phase feeding uh what was the, can anybody remember what was the directivity we had in the previous case with a single element anybody remember i will deactivate it 2.08 correct so that's the maximum directivity of the single element antenna so with having by having two elements we have the directivity improved so array factor activate array with just two elements so the directivity is around 3.11 so what would happen to the 3 db beam width so the 3 db beam width would come down correct so naturally it would come down okay so let me show let me take the other two examples where beta is equal to 90 degrees and beta is equal to minus 180 degree so let us go back to 3d plot and let me change the array factor here to so the shift in the phase shift in the 90 degrees is 90 degrees update so it is beta by 2 and beta by 2 it has taken yeah look at the pattern so it has become a directional pattern so and look at the directivity now so the directivity is around 5 db 5.1 db so this is with 90 degree phase difference so look at the 3db beam width it's around 180 degrees but the directivity has now increased to 5db approximately 5db and this we have in the minus y axis so we have the direction in the minus y axis so the maximum direct maximum radiation is is occurring at minus y axis so if you change the phase to minus 90 degrees which right here update the list okay so the pattern happens to have the maximum in the plus y axis so you can quickly do the analysis suppose you want to feed some other angle right so you want to feed some other angle not 90 degrees so say 45 degrees you can quickly do the simulation here and it will show you what will be the radiation pattern for different other angles so so there is no null so the null is there only in the 90 degrees so means only in the element factor so there is no null in the array factor so you can you can before making uh, before uh, going into the let me ask you a question but before going to that question what, this is a very powerful tool in the cst so all you have to do is you can you can simulate an antenna array uh, sorry you can just simulate a single element let me deactivate it so you can single you can simulate you can model a single element and you can simulate a single element and then you can use the array factor once you have in the far field you can use the array factor to give you can vary the distances and you can also vary the phase and then you can simulate it just for curiosity let me see what happens if i increase the distance look at what happens it's very interesting so we have now maximum radiation happening in the x axis and there are four nulls 
one at theta equal to zero and one eighty degree and theta equal to ninety degree. So we have nulls in by increasing the distance. So let me just see what happens if I further increase it. Make it lambda. So we have grating loops coming into the picture, correct? So we have now the grating loops. The grating loops charts coming entering into the picture. So, so it's all, it's all trade-off between the pattern what we want and what is the distance between the elements and what should be the phase difference between the elements. Okay, so you can. This is a very neat tool, very nice tool to play with it. And you can before making a simulation of the entire array, you can just simulate a single element and then activate the antenna array factor, and you can play with the pattern uh, you can see what the pattern how the patterns look like by changing the space factor and you can change the phase factor and you can verify the pattern okay let me ask you something what is the biggest limitation of the analysis that we have carried so far i know that we have made a lot of simplifications here right so one is theta one is equal to theta two is equal to theta is one simplification R1 and R and R2 are uh, parallel to each other is another simplification. What is the biggest simplification that we have made here? Another simplification, not simplification. Uh, what is one of the important assumptions that we have made here, which is practical, which is not practical, in the sense which we will which we will face in the practical, which the issue will be faced in the practical sense, but we have not considered it in the analysis. Can anybody tell me? We have taken antenna elements as infinitesimal points. Yes, one is infinitesimal point. But if you see whatever analysis we have carried out, it is almost holding good even for the uh, finite length dipole antenna here. Correct? Yes. So that means yes, that is one of the observations. That is right. Uh, so infinitesimal point is coming here. The element factor in single element is an infinitesimal dipole antenna. Correct? So if we take the dipole antenna, finite length dipole antenna, here we will have a uh, factor from the dipole antenna, right? So what is another important uh, issue that we have probably not noticed in the analysis, which is which we will face in the practical issue? Let me tell you. Let me ask you in another way. Okay, suppose if we bring what happens, what is one factor that will be affected if we bring the antennas too close to each other or too far away from each other? Okay, let me ask you in different way. The analysis, is it accurate if we see we have the distance between the two elements, right? So if you make it more far away from each other, that means if you break take the elements very far away, very uh, far apart from each other, will the analysis be more accurate or the will the analysis be okay or less accurate? Less accurate. So if we bring them very close to each other, what happens then? It would be more accurate then. Why? So because that approximations of theta one, theta two, and theta would be uh, closer, and uh, these R one, R and R two would also be more closer to each other. Okay, I understand your point. So what you are telling is this approximation what we made will be more accurate. These two approximations, right? Yes. So it will be more accurate if you bring the antennas very close to each other. I agree with you on that aspect, but I was looking for something else. Mm, I let me put that in different way. What is one factor which we are missing in the entire analysis, which will be dominant when the two elements will be close to each other? Another hint. The current fit, sir. Sorry, what? The current fit to the element, sir. Current we have already taken into account, right? So current fit to the elements we have already taken into account. Yes. So we are missing one factor which will be very dominant if we bring the antennas very close to each other, and that will make our analysis not very much accurate. Coupling, right? So the antenna will talk to each other. 
if you bring them very close to each other so they will be coupling from one antenna to another antenna correct yes yes so what we have forgotten now or what we have uh, neglected here is a coupling so what we told was see the distance if if d is the distance if we bring them very close to each other or even if it is lambda by 4 there is a coupling so one antenna is going to so the radiation from the one antenna the near field they are in the near field to each other so they will talk to each other and the radiation from one antenna gets coupled to another antenna and the radiation from that antenna gets coupled to this antenna right so they will talk to each other so there is coupling and if you bring them very close to each other the coupling will be very strong in that case so the impact of the coupling is going to affect our analysis our accuracy of the analysis so we have not taken the coupling into account so even the simulation what we have used here with the array factor we have not taken the coupling into account so in the next class what i will show is how to do the simulation by taking the coupling into account which will take the coupling into account and then we will move on with the uniform element array so n element array so with that i would like to close the, the topic on two element antenna arrays it's a very simple topic so i will request all of you to go through it once again and also practice on how to do it in the simulation just using the array factor very powerful tool really powerful tool in my opinion otherwise the life becomes very complicated so they have made our life so simple so please practice that also and uh, if you have any clarifications we will discuss in the next class so with that i will uh, take uh, the leave from today's class um, have a good day all of you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you